Welcome, everyone, to our Eucharistic celebration of the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Out of respect for the liturgy and those around you, please silence your phones at this time. We continue to honor the COVID-19 guidelines by, outlined by the Archdiocese of San Antonio in regards to Mass and other liturgical celebrations in response to recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. With this weekend's liturgies, for the sake of the flow of communion, we are asking all to join the procession. However, the flow will now be ushered through the center and side aisles. Collection baskets will remain available as you exit the church. Please continue to pay close attention to the directions from our ushers throughout the Mass, as they will be your guides during communion and at the end. Thank you for your patience and assistance. Please stand as we begin the celebration. Our gathering hymn is in the Green Psalm Books, number 245 in the Green Psalm Books. Won't you please join? Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together on this 4th of July weekend, we recognize the independence of our country, and we thank God for, for that opportunity of living and freedom and, and for justice for all. And on this wonderful weekend also, we have one of our own, Demi, Cruz is here to receive First Communion. So Demi, I want you to know that everybody here is going to be praying for you as you receive your First Communion, okay? And so we're very, we're very excited about this special day for you as well, all right? That okay? There may be a little bit of confusion here. Okay, is that okay, Deacon? My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate this mystery of God's love, let us take this time to acknowledge our failures, asking our Lord for peace and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued and slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face, and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
lift up my eyes who are enthroned in heaven as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters our eyes are fixed on the As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Have pity on us, O oh Lord, have pity on us. For we are more than sated with content. Our souls are more than salted with the mockery of the arrogant. With the contempt of the proud. Eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for His mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. upon me, for he set me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they all took offense at him. 
And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own home. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying hands on him. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A prophet is not without honor in his native place. And he was not able to, to explore any miracles there because of their lack of faith. I want to apologize to Demi here. The last name is Costatino, right? And uh, we call him Cruz, so we apologize for that mistake. But today is your first communion, right? And we're here to celebrate with you. It's a very special day for you. And because it's your first time that you're going to be receiving the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what you have received, he shall become. So we're here to celebrate with you. Let's give Demi a real round of applause, Demi. We're here for you, brother. We're here for you. A prophet is not welcome in his own native place. Reminds me when I was discerning about the priesthood, Father David Garcia, you all might remember but David Garcia was at the cathedral for many years as director. Father David Garcia was the vocation director, and I was going through a discernment process with other men that were thinking about the priesthood. And Father David Garcia and I were walking around Woodlawn Lake, and he was telling me, you know, Eric, you got it. It's about that time now. It's been a couple of years now. You've been discerning. What are you thinking? Are you going to become a priest? Are you going to get married? Are you going to re remain single? What is God calling you to? What is your vocation? And I stopped. I said, you know, Father David, I have to tell you, I really am feeling called to the priesthood. But I don't think I could stay here in San Antonio. You know, all my exes live in Texas. <laughs> Man, that's a hard one. So, so I really could relate a lot to what Jesus was going through in his native place. Because how can you take me serious? I knew you when you were a little kid. I knew when you were in high school. I knew you when you were in junior high. You're not Father Eric. You're just the old guy that we used to play ball with on the court's house. And it's hard in some ways. That's what happened to Jesus. Who are you? You're the carpenter's son. You're the son of Mary and Joseph. We know who you are. You can't just come in here and just say, hey, I have all this knowledge all of a sudden. Because that doesn't work just like that. So he wasn't, he wasn't able to perform any miracles there because in many ways they rejected him. They rejected him. In some ways you could even say he failed with them. Hey, but it's Jesus. He's the Son of God. He doesn't fail. But he experienced it. In his own human nature, he experienced rejection and failure as we, in our spiritual journeys, may sometimes experience as well. When we go through rejection, when we go through failure in our lives, what do we do? How do we bounce back, so to speak? That's what Jesus did. And what's the greatest failure that he did? Death on a cross. Ultimate failure. And what did God do? He turned that ultimate failure into the greatest hope ever through his resurrection. He turned death on a cross into hope. And that's what God does. In our failures, God could make it a possibility for hope. Something good could come out of something that we thought was rejection or failure. That's what God does in our lives. The question is, are we open? Do we see God's glory? Do we see the goodness? When bad things happen to good people, it's going to happen to us. Things are going to happen in our lives that we have no control over. And how are we in some ways 
seeing the resurrection? How are we seeing hope and goodness when bad things happen? And in many ways, when Jesus went through his own town and was rejected by many of his own people, he didn't give up. He didn't say, well, my own people aren't accepting me. A lot of people aren't seeing God inside of me. So I guess I just have to give it up. No, he continued the ministry. And of course, as we come to understand where Christianity is in our own lives, but when we are face to face with rejection, and many of us have gone through that already, rejection, failure, difficulties, the hardships of life, the darkness, that we don't give up, that we still see light, that we still see hope. And that's really what the, the readings are about today. It's Jesus being rejected and experiencing failure, but he didn't give up. He continued to have hope. Today, Demi, you're going to receive your first communion. And it's a wonderful experience to experience Christ for the very first time, to receive Jesus. And when I've talked to many of your, your classmates, and I said, when you receive Jesus for the very first time, in many ways it's, we become what we have received. When I talk to your classmates, I said, what does it mean to become like Christ? And a lot of them said, it means we have to be nice, we have to be kind, we have to love, we have to forgive, we have to be that which Christ wants us to be. Because now that I have Jesus here inside of me, I can't have excuses that I didn't know better because now Jesus is here and he's showing us the way. And so I really hope, Demi, that this in many ways would be the beginning of your life with Christ inside of you. That he gives you the strength in times of your weakness. What Paul said in today's readings, at my weakest moment is when I'm strongest. When I'm weak is when I'm strong. See, there's, a, there's, a con there's a conflict there. How can I be strong when I'm weak? And Christ, and Paul is saying, because when I'm weak, I can't do this myself. That's where the communion comes in. The communion gives us the strength to do the things that we normally can't do, like forgive someone. How do I forgive someone who hurt me? How do I forget someone who hurt my family? How do I forgive that person that's taken away my inner peace? How? And we say, through the grace of God, he gives us the strength. So what Paul is saying is, when I'm weakest, is when I can't do this anymore. He says, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to be the Christian that God is calling me to be. I'm tired of being the right person. I'm trying to be the good son. It's hard to be a Christian in this world today. And my weakest moment is when God has given me the strength to be the person that I need to be. When I'm weak is when I'm strong. Because God is working overtime. It's God that gives me the strength to forgive those I need to forgive. To love my enemies, pray for my persecutors, forgive those who have harmed me. God is doing that, not I. So on this Sunday, this 4th of July weekend, that we celebrate Independence Day, that we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be grateful for that we live in this great country, a country of, of freedom and liberty and justice for all. And we have a lot to, to really, truly thank God for being a part of this wonderful country, to be grateful, to be thankful, but to be a part of. We have to be a part of the system and the way of living our life as God is calling to, as righteousness, as love, forgiveness, mercy, kindness, compassion. Where does that come from if it's not from within us? That's what our country stands for. It stands for one that loves as God has loved you. And in my weakest moment it is when I'm strong. And then he sends us out into the world. He says, now go forth 
and be the light of Christ for others. Even if it's in your native town, even if your family may reject you, your co-workers may laugh at you, we are all called to be prophets. We're all called from our time of our baptism to be priest, prophet, and king. We have a prophetic voice. Don't be ashamed of it. Speak out. Let everyone know that God is not dead, but that God is the God living because he lives in each and every one of us. A prophet is not welcome in his own hometown. And my weakest moment is when I'm strong. Amen? Let us stand together for the prayers of the faithful and the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, bow, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who is the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, standing in the Lord's presence, we place, we place our, our trust, trust in God, God as, as we call to mind our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that we may risk entering into a deeper relationship with Jesus that will transform us and the way we live, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, as we celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day, that God will guide us in living the values which we proclaim so that, that all may experience life, liberty, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater trust, that God will free us from our past mistakes, strengthen us as we recognize our weaknesses, and open us to God's power working within us. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering from tragedy, especially the victims of the building collapse in Florida, and the heat in the Northwest, that they, they may find relief and confidence that God is with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and for those suffering with COVID, as well as protection of caregivers and frontline staff, may God encourage and then restore them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, for those whose names are written in our prayer request book, and for those who have died recently, May they, they know, know the peace, peace of the risen Christ. Christ. Let, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of this Mass, for the repose and souls of Jose de Jesus, Irma L. Martinez, Herman O. Kuner, Sofia Ponce Gonzalez, for special intentions for the Borio and Arola Flores. 
we pray, pray to the Lord. Lord. For our first communicant, Dimitri Constantino, may he always be guided by the light of Christ as he receives his first communion today. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our own intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Merciful God, hear the prayers that we have brought to you and have mercy on us all in our needs. We ask this through Christ our Lord. salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so is the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. in the name of the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the age, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we stand together with faith and confidence in eternal life, at the Savior's command and born by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, let us offer each other a sign of peace. pray this act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are not able to join us. And we pray, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Glory. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated just for short announcements. We do have, as we mentioned, the collection baskets will be placed at the contributions of the, at the entrance. I'm sorry. We're changing things constantly. I'm trying to read your new ways waiting here. I apologize. Uh, there, the second collection is for the maintenance fund. Thank you for your generosity. The Padre Pio Chapel is now open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And any scheduled devotions need to be arranged with the church office. Our 4th of July, we do have a 4th of July prayer that hopefully everybody received as you walked in. And this is a prayer that, uh, as we prepare to commemorate the adoption of the Declaration of Independence this 4th of July, let us take a few moments for silence and appreciation for all that we have in our lives and for those who came before us, who fought so that we may live in an independent country. And together let us pray. God, source of all freedom, this day is bright with memory of those who declared that life and liberty are your gift to every human being. Help us to continue a good work begun long ago. Make our vision clear and our will strong that in human solidarity, we will find liberty and justice and the honor that belongs to every life on earth. Turn our hearts towards the family of nations to understand the ways of others, to offer friendship, and to find safety only in the common good of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We also have the traveling chalice that was given to a family my hope that every family will give opportunity as this family comes forward, that every family will have the opportunity to take this, this chalice home to pray for vocations. So I'm going to invite you to pull out your vocation card now. And if you don't have one, it's in the back of the green uh, uh, books. And together, if you find the chalice prayer together, let us pray. God in baptism. You called us by name and made us members of your people, the church. Guide us to know our vocation in life and to respond by living your spirit of holiness. For your greater glory and for the service of your people, raise up dedicated and generous members who will serve their lives as women and men, religious, priests, deacons, married or single. Send your spirit to guide and strengthen us so we may serve your people following the example of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer this prayer. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We always like to welcome visitors from out of town or anyone here for the very first time to St. Luke's to please stand and be recognized. Do we have any, any uh, visitors from out of town or anyone here for the very first time? Oh, we do have some visitors, yes. And where are you from? Eagle Pass, welcome from Eagle Pass. Thank you for joining us, thank you. And where are y'all from? Mexico City, bienvenidos, welcome, welcome to have you with us, thank you. And way back here, where are you from? Houston, Texas, welcome, all the way from Houston, Texas. Thank y'all, thank y'all for joining us. Do you have anybody still, oh, way over here in the corner, where are you from? St. Louis, all right, all the way from St. Louis, thank you. Do we have anybody celebrating birthdays, anniversaries today, or any time this week? Please stand up and get your birthday blessings. We have birthdays, 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 a lot of birthdays here. Birthday, anniversary, how many years? 
26 years of marriage. Congratulations. Congratulations. Any more birthdays? Let's extend our hands upon our brothers and sisters and give them our blessings. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of our brothers and sisters celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries. Lord, send down your spirit upon them. Bless them, guide them, protect them, and lead them all towards your eternal kingdom. May the Spirit of God come upon you and bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 